Good morning. I'm a forester here, and today we're going to do the last in a series of videos where I've been reviewing these four gentlemen folders. We have the Browning Model 560, the Boker Plus Elegance, the Benchmade 235, and the Chris Reed Manundi. Now there are individual reviews of each of these knives on my uh, channel, so you can uh, go see those if you want more detail. But what I'm going to do is uh, uh, go over the 10 categories that I've rated each knife on. And um, as you, if you've watched the other videos, you know that I'm, I'm giving an ABC rating. And what I'll do with this video to summarize it is to just convert the knife price into a pay for A cost. Now, this was a $7 knife. I got it at the FN Gun Factory and um, they were offering it at a very discounted price. Normally, the uh, browning is going to cost $15 to $20 uh, anywhere online. The Boker Plus, I think I got for $47. The uh, Benchmade 235, I believe, was $102 from Knife Center. And then Chris Reed Menundi uh, was $375. So I'll convert the cost of the knife into a cost per A. And, um, you know, I'm sure there are other features. Uh, there are a lot of B's and C's on here in the different categories. Some people might say, well, those have value also, and they do. But I'm going to see how this works. The idea for paying for A's comes from our daughter. Whenever she was in high school, we paid her for A's. Now, we didn't pay much. I think I only paid $5 per A. But she made a lot of A's. I don't think she was straight A student, but she mostly made A's. And I don't recall her studying an awful lot, so I only paid $5 for A's for her uh, grades. These, we paid a lot, all of these, we paid a lot more than $5 per A. And I'll go over that. Well, let's uh, go over the categories and go over each knife one by one. Okay, this is the Browning, model 560. I hope that you can read that. But here are the categories, appearance, materials, ease of operation, lock up, fit and finish, centering, weight, carry system, warranty, and collectability. And you can see what the Browning scored, uh, 1A, 4Bs, and 5Cs. It's uh, an ABC knife. If uh, I was going to compare this to a student, this would be your basic shop class student. It'll get the job done and not break the bank doing it, I guess. It's a good knife and I've enjoyed carrying it. Okay, the next knife is the Boker Plus Elegance. And you can see uh, three A's, seven B's, and zero C's. And that's one advantage if you can pay just a little bit more money you'll uh, you'll have a better knife if I was going to compare this knife to that student it this would be the prom queen It's a very good looking knife but it was temperamental especially in in how it opened uh, I almost sent it back at one time because I was having so much problems with it but uh, I'm glad I stuck with it it's a uh, it's a good knife next is the Benchmade And you can see we've moved up. <clears throat> this is a much scored uh, much higher. Eight A's, two B's, and zero C's. This knife was close to perfection, but not quite. And one area that it sacrificed in was materials and also weight. For such a small knife, it's you know they could have lightened it up just a little bit. If I was going to compare this knife to a student, this is your basic college prep honor roll student. And then last, but not least, is the Chris Reed Menundi. And as you might expect, the Menundi scored straight A's. In fact, there's uh, four pluses out there, A pluses, so they scored, they got extra credit for something. Appearance, materials, fit and finish, that was a big one. And then collectability. If I was going to compare the Menundi to a student, it would be a student at an exclusive private school. 
It uh, is very expensive, but if you want the best, you're going to have to pay that premium. Now I'll go over a chart that I created. Well, here's how I made sense of out of the uh, of price differences for those four knives. I created a chart, and I'll call it my gentleman's folder comparison chart. On the x-axis is the number of A's. So you go from no A's, which the even the uh, FN, the Browning uh, FN knife, had one A. And these are, I generally view as areas of excellence or strong points. Reasons that you would buy the knife. All the way out to 10 A's. And the only knife that uh, scored a perfect 10 was the Manundi, my pointer. So these are areas of excellence that you would uh, uh, buy a knife in particular for. And uh, then on the y-axis is the cost per A. And so what I did is I took the price of the knife and divided it by the number of A's and came up with the price per A. And uh, I put two lines on here. It looked like most of the knives cost, or three of the four knives, cost less than $15 per A. The only one that cost more was the Manundi, and it was considerably more. And so I put a line across here at $15 per A. And then I put a line right here in the midpoint between five and six A's and divided this chart into four areas. This area down here is what I'm calling budget knives. These are knives that would range in price from, well, $7 for the FN up to maybe $50. And then you come up to the high value knives. And these are knives that, that have at least six to 10 A's, areas of excellence, and they co they're going to cost practically somewhere around $50 to $175. Then you have the premium knives. One of the knives, this Manundi, fit in that category. And these are going to be generally $175 plus. Then you have this category over here, and you don't want to buy a knife in this category because if it scores in this general area, it's going to have very few areas of excellence, or A's, and there you're going to pay a lot for them. Now I will say the Manundi, and let me change pointers as I talk about each knife. Okay, here's the, uh, excuse me, the uh, Browning. This is the Browning right here. It only scored one A, and I paid $7 for it, so it was $7 per A. This knife uh, could have cost 15 to $20, depending on where I bought it, which would have put it up into this category. So that's where I say you need to be uh, uh, careful, shop around, and get a good price. This is a solid knife. I would enjoy carrying it if it's the only knife I had. But uh, you have to cut corners if you're going to cut cost. And so um, the one thing you don't want to cut is safety. And this does have a strong lockup. And... Um, you know, it's a decent knife. It'll get the job done. The second knife, this one right here, is the Boker. And the cost there was, oh, somewhere around 12 or 12.50 per A. And it scored four A's. But it's still in that budget knife category. They um, could have moved up possibly into this high value knife category if they had improved the materials and uh, some of the fit and finish issues. But this is a very nice knife. It's a beautiful knife. That's its strong point. And I've enjoyed carrying this one. So the next knife is the Benchmade 235. With this knife, we're solidly into this high value knife category. The knife cost $102 and we're still under that $15 per A category. And then the last knife, of course, is the Manundi. And we've already said the Manundi scored up here. Uh, I've already commented, but all of the knives scored under $15 per A, except the Manundi. And it was uh, at least three times the cost per A of these other knives. Now, is that worth it? Is it, is it worth $375 to have a knife that basically is a perfect knife? 
that you cannot improve on. You can have a different design, but I couldn't find any flaws in this knife. And you have to answer that yourself, whether that's worth it to you or not. I would say I'm not going to collect these knives. I'm not the type of person that's going to have uh, one and have three or four of these knives in Damascus steel and different wood um, scales. But I did want to have one just to see what, what all the talk was about. Well, let me summarize, and I'll put some knives on here where they fall on the chart so that you can uh, have something to look at besides just the chart. And I'll go over what lessons I learned from going through this process. And one lesson I learned is that knives scored more A's as their prices increased. And that just makes common sense, but better knives cost more. And I'm glad it's that way. Wouldn't you hate that uh, it was more random that as you paid more for a knife, you didn't really know if you were getting a better knife or not. Second lesson was that low-end knives can compromise in some areas. You know, this browning is a nice knife, but it compromises in a lot of areas. And what one thing that I would say is that lockup and safety should not be compromised. And it didn't. Third lesson, three out of the four knives kept their cost of A's under $15. And that seemed to be a pretty good rule of thumb, so maybe as you're shopping for knives, you could keep that in mind. Fourth, the Menundi had uh, three times the cost per A of the other knives. So if you want the best, you're going to have to pay for it. And last, the difference in the premium knife and the next best knife was basically in the materials, fit and finish, and collectability. The recommendations that I would make, just three recommendations. Number one, buy the best knife you can afford. I'm not going to go in debt over a knife, but if you have cash, buy the best knife you can afford. If you can afford a Menundi and would appreciate having the best, buy one. If you can only afford a low-end knife, <clears throat> make sure that you get a knife with good solid lockup. The one thing you don't want to do is get uh, an unsafe knife. And because uh, features can be compromised, you might end up, if you're not careful, with an unsafe knife. Now, I will say that the only knife of these four that cut me was the um, Browning. And it was... Uh, I, I cut myself on my thumb uh, as I opened the knife. Uh, it sort of uh, grabbed and my knife, my thumb slid up into the blade. And then the third recommendation is shop around. Prices vary considerably. Uh, don't overpay for the features that you get in a knife. And here again, the browning was one where shopping around or coming across a good deal made that knife worthwhile. I probably wouldn't have bought the Browning if it had been, um, you know, 15 to $20. But at $7, you couldn't go wrong. All right, well, I hope you've uh, enjoyed this review or, or gotten something out of it. I've enjoyed doing it. And stay tuned. I have a little bonus feature that I'll add at the very end of this video. Y'all take care. Bye. All right, for a bonus feature, I thought I would do more knives, not just gentlemen folders, and just see if uh, this chart makes sense with more knives. So I'll go over this quickly. You've already seen this um, Browning FN, uh, and it's right here. It only scored 1A. Okay, next comes a series of uh, four knives that all had four uh, A's. One is the Spyderco Tenacious the Kershaw Skyline. One of the very first knives that I reviewed is in that group and this is the Cutco Sportsman's Knife. And then one of the gentleman folders that I reviewed is the Prom Queen, this Boker Plus Elegance. All four of these knives fell in this uh, range right here and all were under $15 per A. All right, now we move up one notch with the Kershaw Scallion. We're still in that budget knife category. 
uh, seven to fifty dollars but we have a lot of features in a small knife and fairly inexpensive knife okay we move up another notch now we're into this high value knife we have the Kershaw blur I'm sure y'all are familiar with this one and we have six A's and still well under that fifteen dollar per A category we move up another notch and we have the spider code Delica that's a home run knife there and it had actually seven A's and the price per A came down uh, even more from that uh, Kershaw blur now we have two knives we have the the gentleman folder the bench made 235 See, I love how that one opens and the um, Benchmade 940 and both of these score had A days they were almost perfection the only thing they could have done a little bit better is uh, improve the uh, steel the blade steel now this is a used this is an older uh, 940 the new steel is S30V and so that would truly be a premium knife and the knife the cost that I used is for the S30V knife and then, as you saw in the review, you have the Manundi. So there you have it. And it looks like this chart really does hold up for a wide range of knives. Y'all take care. Are you ready for bonus feature number two? It just occurred to me that I probably didn't answer the most obvious question that someone might have. And that's, which is the highest value knife of any of these that I just reviewed? And uh, the answer is probably a tie, but they're two different types of knives. One's smaller, another one's a little bit larger and could serve a tactical role. But the larger knife, oh, and they're both manufactured by Spyderco. The larger knife is the Spyderco Tenacious. As you recall, this one is this point right here. And uh, it serves both an EDC and a tactical role. And uh, so anyway, that's probably one of the highest value knives. I think I only paid $27 for this knife. I shopped around pretty hard for it. But uh, you get a lot of knife for $27 there and a lot of features. But if you move up to uh, this point right here, this is probably the highest value knife of all. Of the most features, 7 A's for a fairly low cost. And that's the Spyderco Delica. Both of these knives are Spyderco. You've got that spidey hole on both knives, and uh, both are very high-value knives. Way to go, Spyderco.